So in last week's video, we explored how to use the growth in Blender. In this week's video, we're going to look at mega scans in Unreal. Let's jump right in. So let's get started with Megascans Trees. It's an amazing tool. And in order to start working with it, first of all, you need Real Engine 4, not 5. I couldn't get it working for 5, but keep an eye out because maybe by the time you see this, they actually have support for version 5. But for now, we need version 4. And the thing is you want to create a project first and then you can add Megascans Tree to the project of your choice. So I already added it to this project, but you want to do that too. Once you've done it, you can launch the project. So let's jump in. So once we have the project up and running, um, we get a folder with uh, Black Elder and that's the trees they currently have uh, done at Megascans. So it's still kind of like in development. So for now they only have one tree. It's quite a lot of work to get these trees out. So hopefully it'll be soon, but let's see how quick they get all these trees out. And basically in the geometry folder, you either can have a pivot painter tree or a simple wind. For most cases, the simple wind is enough, but for specific cases, you might have to go to the pivot painter, but it's a bit more heavy in your scene. So if you can get away with the simple wind, then the simple wind is probably your best pick. And then we have two types of trees here. We have the field trees and the forest trees. The forest trees are, like it says, it's in the forest where it competes with other trees for light. So it grows slightly different than trees in a field that don't have the same competition. And the thing you do is once you've decided which one you want, you can simply just drag it into your scene. And there you can see we have a tree all ready to go. It's animated by default. You can see it has this quite nice wind animation. And there's a couple of parameters we can play with. And in order to do so, we need to go to our MS presets folder. In there, we have the MS Foliage material, and there we have the Global Foliage Actor, and there we have BP Global Foliage Actor. So just drag that into the scene, you can set these locations to default. And basically here we have settings for the wind, for the season and everything like that. It comes with a little visualization of how the wind is blowing. I think if we turn this up, yeah, you can see that in the animation of this wind catcher, I think it is. So that's an easy way to check out how the wind is kind of flowing. Obviously you can look at the tree as well, but it might be a bit easier on the ice. And uh, let's set this back to normal. And let's check out a few of these things. So basically we can just increase the wind strength. And you can see this is really over the top, but <laughs> this increases how strong the wind blows. Just simple and straightforward. Then the noise uh, seems to be like the turbulence or how irregular the wind blows. The wind strength, I think is a multiplier, but I'm not entirely sure. This is all just values you can play with. And the tile is how big the tile is. So basically how uniform the wind will blow to your tree or how irregular it will be. So that's in a nutshell, just the wind settings. That's super straightforward, really easy. And the other thing you can play with is in here, we have season strength. If you turn these values up, you can see we go to different seasons and I will change the color of the leaves. So it looks like they're in a different season. Some brightness value. I'm not exactly sure what this is, but these are values you can just play with. And a more important setting as well is the health of the tree. So at 10, it's fully healthy. And if you turn it down, um, the tree will just get more and more dead. As you can see, it looks a lot more sad. And if I zoom in on the leaves, you can actually see how this works. So now you can see the leaves look really dead. And if we bring the values up, now you can see it's kind of like how real leaves would die as well. So you know that they die slowly from the outside to the inside because the nutrients have a tougher time reaching the outside of the leaves than the inside of it. So it's quite a nice feature. It's really nicely, nicely done. I'm just going to set it back to 10 and there's some variation values you can play around with as well. But yeah, it's important to know that these values you can usually find in the global foliage sector and not in the tree itself. And then lastly, let's delete this tree and you can paint the tree on landscapes as well. So here I have this massive kind of landscape. I just quickly exported from Houdini as a bit of tiling, but I'm not too concerned about that for now. So 
what we can do if we go to modes here and we select foliage then I've already loaded a couple of variations and we can just select them all hit the checkbox and now we can paint all these trees in and basically you want to set the density to a really low value and you can set the size of your brush so here you paint in a big region and yeah now we can just paint in the trees on the landscapes so let's paint some trees in and now you can see we got a whole field different types of trees and in this way you can quickly like really quickly just set up a whole forest kind of environment and obviously you can like increase the density make a bit of a denser forest you can see here it's a bit of an overkill yeah in these ways you can quickly create some nice natural environments it's a short tutorial for this week because quicksol does kind of all the magic for you in a way so it just makes your life super easy. You can really easily get some really nice natural environments out. And that's it for this week. Next week, I'm gonna cover the Houdini uh, tree creation tools. So that's a way more kind of manual way of creating trees. So you can create some realistic trees, some abstract trees. The sky's really the limit. So that's it for next week. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.